In three, two, one. Seven things you probably didn't know, you need to know. I'm Jamie East and this is is the small seven. Good morning everybody, it's Thursday the 3rd of February and it's Golden Retriever Day. And a big happy birthday to Warwick Davis, Isla Fisher, Amal Clooney and Kirsty Ward. As Boris battles on to save his job, Keir Starmer seems to be running out of patience, particularly over Boris's debunked claim about Keir failing to prosecute Jimmy Savile while he was head of the Crown Prosecution Service. At Prime Minister's question time, he really sounded like he'd had enough of Mr Disco Party. Our party stood together as we defeated fascism in Europe. Now their leader stands in the House of Commons parroting the conspiracy theories of violent fascists to try and score cheap political points. It's time to restore some dignity. And he's not alone in losing patience. There's been a steady drip drip of Tory MPs handing letters expressing no confidence to the chair of the 1922 committee, Sir Graham Brady. There were three additional names on Wednesday added to the list, which included Anthony Mangnall and Sir Gary Streeter, and BBC News estimates there are currently around 17 letters submitted, while 54 is the magic number to trigger a vote on Boris's party leader. One of the no longer confident MPs was Tobias Elwood, and he says he's not alone. Let's cut to the chase. Why doesn't the Prime Minister call a a a vote of confidence in himself? So we can then make a judgment as to whether there is the support for him, and then we move on, or it's now time to elect a new leader. Leveling Up Secretary Michael Gove reappeared on Wednesday clutching a bright and shiny Leveling Up plan. But before he got to that, he had some thoughts on Boris, who he firmly supports, and also on ex-advisor Dominic Cummings, who's been busy leaking against Boris. I work very closely with Dominic. Um, uh, As I said uh, earlier today, I've still got a deep reservoir of affection for him. Um, uh, uh, And that's why, when I profoundly disagree with what he's doing and saying at the moment, it is difficult. Michael explained what exactly is included in the levelling up plan to the House of Commons. We need to tackle and reverse the inequality that is limiting so many horizons and which also harms our economy. The gap between much of the South East and the rest of the country in productivity, in health outcomes, in wages, in school results and in job opportunities must be closed. Labour's shadow levelling up Secretary Lisa Nandy isn't impressed. In fact, she says she's seen most of what's in the plan before. What we've got is a series of rehashed announcements, some of which are so old, they were actually originally made by Gordon Brown when he was the Labour Prime Minister in 2008. This just simply isn't good enough. We need good jobs back in our towns with good wages. We need money back into people's pockets. And instead, what we've got is these big slogans and absolutely nothing behind it. Boris finally got around to his call with Vladimir Putin on Wednesday. He warned him that any further incursion of Russian troops into the Ukraine would be a serious miscalculation, and both leaders agreed that aggravation was in no one's interest. However, RAF jets had to be scrambled to escort four Russian planes out of British airspace, and Russia's deputy UN ambassador Dmitry Polyansky didn't seem too impressed by Boris's efforts at diplomacy, however. Frankly, we don't trust British diplomacy. I think uh, in recent years, British diplomacy has shown uh, that it is absolutely worthless in such issues. Uh, I'm sorry to say, and I really don't want to offend anybody, especially my good friends, uh, British diplomats, but really the results are nothing to boast about. Meanwhile, US President Joe Biden's ordered a further 3,000 US troops to be deployed to Europe, as Pentagon spokesperson John Kirby explains. The United States will soon move additional forces to Romania, Poland, and Germany. I want to be very clear about something. These are not permanent moves. They are moves designed to respond to the current security environment. Moreover, these forces are not going to fight in Ukraine. Joe Rogan's been at the centre of a storm of protest for the past week or so since Neil Young pulled his music from Spotify in protest over what he saw as vaccine disinformation on the podcaster's show. Spotify have now added advisory labelling and a COVID information hub, with Rogan attracting support from The Rock, amongst others. But now podcasters have started to pull their shows, including Mary Trump, and actress and activist Sharon Stone had some strong views on the matter when TMZ caught up with her. I'm an infectious disease worker who has won the Nobel Peace Summit Award for my work in infectious disease, Harvard Awards, Einstein Award, you know, these kind of things. Yeah. And I work with Dr. Fauci uh, for decades. And I just want to say the pretense that these are opinions and that he should put a disclaimer. He should put a disclaimer that he's an asshole. 
Still to come on the Smart 7, Tom Holland's got puppy eyes and it's pretty scary training for the Winter Olympics. Right after this. Welcome back. The Beijing Winter Olympics officially start on Friday, but even before the 24th Winter Games kick off, Team GB have a win under their belts in the curling mixed doubles. They picked up a 9-5 win on the ice in the game that everyone falls in love with every four years. Training for the Winter Olympics isn't a walk in the park, though, as Australian cross-country skier Jessica Yeaton explained while describing her training in Alaska. Um, I was out training, biking with my boyfriend, and we ran into two grizzly bears, and they both got up on their hind legs and were, like, grunting at us, and I thought that was, like, the end. And so just things like that. And if you were in Alaska, you'd tell that story to other athletes and they'd be like, oh, yeah, me too. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tom Holland's got another big movie on the way, even as Spider-Man No Way Home continues to smash box office records. It's called Uncharted and it's based on the PlayStation game. The movie stars Tom and Mark Wahlberg and they both turned up on the one show but somehow ended up talking about dogs and Tom's dog Tessa in particular. He shared a story about taking Tessa on set while he was making a current war with Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict was giving this massive speech uh, to about a hundred extras and he's crying and he's, you know, giving his heart and soul into this performance. And yeah. she, you know how dogs sneeze with like every fibre in their body? She was just sneezing and sneezing and you can see Benedict like oh. trying to stay in character, trying to stay with it and then eventually he was like, can someone take that dog out of here please? I'm like, I'm so sorry Benny, that's my dog. <laughs> It seems to be final season time for some of the great TV shows from recent years. Peaky Blinders is due to wrap up and so is everyone's favourite assassin drama, Killing Eve. A new trailer's dropped for the fourth and final season as Sandra Oh and Jodie Comer continue their weird relationship. It's out on February the 27th. Do you know that fable about the scorpion and the frog? They hook up. They both die. Because the scorpion can't change its nature. This has been the Smart 7. Wherever you're listening, do us a favour and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Have a great day. Written, produced, and published by Daft Doris.